Now, Anison, the tablets thousands of physicians and dentists recommend for fast relief of pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia, and bisodol mints that quickly rid stomach of gastric distress, present our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks Transcribed. But first, here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's an incredibly fast way to ease the pain. It's Anison, a way countless numbers of people have found superior. Anison acts so promptly to relieve pain. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in convenient tablet form. Thousands of persons have been introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and everyone can have the benefit of their incredibly fast action. So if you want to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. On this guarantee, if the first few Anison tablets do not give you all the relief you want, as fast as you want it, Return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. I'll spell the name for you, A-N-A-C-I-N. Easy to take Anison tablets come in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at your druggists today. Well, it's spring cleaning time throughout the country, and our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High, is not one to sit idly by as her landlady cleans the house. No, indeed. I can watch better standing up. Not that I'm lazy, but Mrs. Davis, bless her heart, refuses to let me help, and for a very good reason. She says she knows exactly where to find the dirt she's been pushing around all winter. <laughs> Last Thursday morning, as I entered the living room, she was already hard at work, and I hated to interrupt her. Oh, Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? What is it, County? <laughs> Please, turn that thing off. Well, that's better. Mrs. Davis, did you make breakfast for me this morning? Because if not, why, I could just... Why, of course I did, dear. Don't you see it? I just finished waxing the table, so I put your bacon and eggs on the sofa. Where? I don't see any bacon and eggs on the sofa. Why, they're right over there on... Oh, my. Connie, as soon as I empty my new Jiffy vacuum, I'll give them to you. <laughs> No, thanks. By that time, they may be a little too well done. <laughs> well, I'll simply have to get breakfast. Mrs. Davis, did you say your new Jiffy vacuum? You just bought a new clean all three weeks ago. What did you need a Jiffy cleaner for? Oh, I really don't need it, dear. But you should see this salesman. <sighs> Any woman would gladly put a down payment on the cleaner with Mr. Murdoch. I've never seen anyone like him before. Besides, he said you had recommended me to him as a prospect. Well, that's true. Several weeks ago, in an unguarded moment, I recommended 20 names to the Jiffy Vacuum Cleaner Company at $2 a name. But that was before you'd bought your clean-all. Now, don't you feel badly, Connie. Mr. Murdoch is due back here at 8.15 sharp, any minute now, to collect his $10 down payment. And if you think you can resist him... You handle him, dear. I'm just a lump of soggy putty in his hands. Well, you'd better unsog, Mrs. Davis, because I'm going to throw him out just as soon as he... Oh, Connie, Connie, that's him. Is my hair net in place? Are my sneakers on straight? Oh, be still, my foolish, palpitating heart. <laughs> Davis, please. It's going to be hard enough to throw him out without you hanging on to his leg. Now, just keep quiet, and I'll do all the talking. I'm very sorry, my good fellow, but... Hello, baby. <laughs> Connie. Hey, where'd you get those great, big, beautiful blue eyes, honey? Doesn't the gorgeous blonde doll talk, Mrs. Davis? Oh, yes, but I think she's in a state of shock. <laughs> Won't you come in, Mr. Murdoch? 
Well, certainly, Mrs. Davis. Now, uh, what do you say, baby? Mrs. Davis, lock the doors. <laughs> oh, that is, by all means, come in, Mr. Gable. Uh, Mr. Peck. Mr. Brando. <laughs> Murdoch is oh, the Murdoch. name, honey. Harry Murdoch. And I'm regional sales manager for the Jiffy Vacuum Cleaner Company. But when I came by last night, Mrs. Davis never told me I'd run into anything as completely ravishing as you. You get me, honey? Dear, close your mouth and answer the man. <laughs> no, that would never work. Connie, I thought you were going to do all the talking. I'm too busy listening. <laughs> Won't you sit down and have some hot chocolate with us, Mr. Murdoch? Oh, uh, before you do, Mr. Murdoch, there's something Mrs. Davis and I have to tell you. Yes, yeah, sugar? Well, three weeks ago, she bought... That is, we already have... Yes, honey? We have... What, what do you have, baby? Well, we have hot chocolate, coffee, soda pop, <laughs> yummy yogurt. <laughs> you can have your choice. Uh, some other time, honey. I haven't got the time right now. I've got to close the sale and then get... Oh, yes, that's just it, Mr. Gable. Mr. Murdoch. And uh, Mrs. Davis had something she wanted to tell you. Yes, uh, you see, uh, I wanted to tell you that... What did you uh, want to tell me, gorgeous? Here's your ten dollars. <laughs> Where do I sign? Where's the paper? Where, where, where? Uh, right, right here, beautiful. Now, here's my pen. Uh, that's the girl. That's fine, Mrs. Davis. Allow me to congratulate you, sugar. You've made a wise investment. And now, girls, I, I should bring in the attachments to show you how they work, but I'm a little rushed. So, uh, what about tonight at 8, hmm? Will this evening at 8 be all right with you, Mrs. Davis, honey? <laughs> How about you, Angel? <laughs> I'll see you, sweethearts, tonight, then. Oh, if I were only 20 years younger. <laughs> Connie. Oh, Connie. Yes, baby. <laughs> what, Mrs. Davis? Dear, why did you let that beautiful man sell me a second cleaner? I wonder if it's legal for a man to have five dimples on one face. <laughs> and you told me you had plenty of sales resistance. Connie, I simply can't afford to pay for two cleaners. Not that I hold it against you for sending Mr. Murdoch to me in the first place, but after all, it does make you a little responsible. I know it, Mrs. Davis, and I'll get back the money and the contract for Mr. Murdoch tonight. I've thought of a way to resist him. But how, dear? I'll just meet him at the door blindfolded with my ears plugged up, and if I keep 20 feet away, his thought waves won't mean a thing. <laughs> you wanted to see me, Mr. Conklin? I didn't get a charley horse chasing you down the corridor for nothing. <laughs> Into my office, please. Yes, sir. And now, uh... Now then, Miss Brooks, to come directly to the point. Why did you send that vacuum cleaner salesman to my poor, befuddled spouse last night? Oh, did your wife buy a jiffy cleaner for Mr. Murdoch, too? She almost signed up for one with the passionate pitchman. <laughs> but as luck would have it, I ducked between them just as she was about to sign. Really? Yes, and it took me an hour to wash her signature off the side of my face. <laughs> Now, Miss Brooks, I am on the verge of selling my old car today for $60, and Mrs. Conklin was on the verge of spending that $60 toward the purchase of that jiffy cleaner. You mean you finally got a customer for that decrepit old car of yours, sir? Why, it's hardly run in 10 years. Hardly run? Why, it's the cleanest Stutz Bearcat on the market. <laughs> Move over, Mr. Murdoch. I've met your master. <laughs> I suppose that's how the world goes, Miss Brooks. The men sell, the women buy. And that's the main reason I asked you in here, Miss Brooks. I asked the Jiffy people to send their salesman here to my office at 8.50 sharp. He'll be here any minute now. And I want you to see how Osgood Conklin has developed his sales resistance to a point 
where it is a veritable walls of Jericho. Mr. Murdoch here? Oh, no, please, sir. Even if he doesn't sell you, the ricochet may trap me for 12 months. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd... I'd One like... moment, Miss Brooks. You need this little lesson in sales resistance. Come in, sir. Hello, handsome. <laughs> you wouldn't know where I could find Mr. Conklin, would you, brown eyes? Oh, uh... Well, he's, uh, he's out right, right now, but uh, could I be, could I be, oh, oh I, I'm Mr. Conklin. Well, I wasn't expecting anything as wonderful as this. I'm Lola Perry, sales representative for the Jiffy Vacuum Cleaner Company. Uh, you're, uh, you're, you're the, uh, the salesman they sent over? Why, yes. You were expecting me, weren't you, handsome? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not quite so much of you. <laughs> that is, I was expecting you, but in a slightly different shape. <laughs> I mean, in a oh, uh, maybe you were expecting a taller person. It was a different difference entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, haven't you something to do? Well, I could push your eyeballs back into their sockets. <laughs> uh, not right now, sir. Not a thing. I'll just sit here and watch your sales resistance. <laughs> Josh, if it's the Battle of Jericho, <laughs> Jericho... Uh, Miss Brooks, Jer I'm certain you have a class that you could go oh, to. Oh, pardon me, Brown Eyes. If I'm interrupting anything, I can leave interrupting and Interrupting anything? Oh, you're not interrupting anything, my dear. Not a thing. No, 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 no. Sit right down, my dear. Sit right down here. Let me help you. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> are you comfy? You'd make any woman feel comfortable, handsome. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> and I'll sit right near you on the tippy tippy end of my desk. <laughs> now then, what can we do for you today? What can we do for you? You just name it, anything, anything at all. And the walls came tumbling. <laughs> <laughs> that will do. Miss Brooks, I'm talking to Miss Perry. You certainly are handsome. And Lola can tell by talking to you that you're the strong, protective type of man who likes to make it easier for us women. Oh, I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> Just one of those was enough to get hooked for life. <laughs> I know you do, honey. That's why your signature on this paper and a teensy down payment isn't going to keep you from giving your wife a jiffy cleaner, is it? Well, no, indeed, it's not going to keep me. Uh, oh, uh, j just a moment. There's, there's something I wanted to say. Yes? What did you want to say to me, brown eyes? Here's your ten dollars. <laughs> where do I sign? Where, 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 where? Right here, big boy. On this line here. That's mm. it. And thank you so much. Well, I guess I'll be going now, handsome. Oh, uh, let me float you to the... Uh, uh, walk you to the door. <laughs> Goodbye, brown eyes. Goodbye, Miss Perry. Oh, la, la. <laughs> you just bought $120 worth of ooh, la, la. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what's a mere $120 when a strong, protective man tries to make it easier for women all over the world? What's a mere $120? <laughs> oh, Dad, I've been Shanghai. <laughs> That's how the world goes, brown eyes. Well, Mr. Conklin, the women sell and the men buy. Miss Brooks, since you sent the Jiffy Company to my household in the first place, I hold you completely responsible. Now, I want you to get back my $10, and I want you to get back my contract. Now, let's see if there's anything else I want you to do. No, sir, there I draw the line. Uh, draw the line? Yes, sir. If you want to get back Lola Perry, you're on your own. <laughs> Friends, if you suffer from acid indigestion, I hope you didn't miss reading this wonderful news. A headline that says, New Mints, Medically Proven, Quickly Rid Stomach of Gastric Distress. That headline is talking about new Bicetol Mints. 
Doctors recommend Bicidol mints because the Bicidol medication acts at once to make painful acid harmless and gives you fast five-way relief. One, speeds relief from gas. Two, sweetens your breath. Three, gives complete longer lasting relief than baking soda. Four, relieves stomach upset from too much eating, drinking, smoking. Five, lets you sleep when acid indigestion strikes at night. So don't suffer acid indigestion, heartburn, or gastric distress from excess acidity. Remember, new mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of gastric distress. And remember the name, Bicidol Mints, B-I-S-O-D-O-L. Get Bicidol Mints for fast relief. Well, when I recommended them as prospects, I had no idea Mrs. Davis and Mr. Conklin would be charmed into buying Jiffy vacuum cleaners, which both of them needed like a hole in the rug. Anyway, they've both managed to make me feel like the finger girl for a vacuum cleaner mob. I tried to forget my troubles at noon when I went down to the cafeteria to meet Mr. Boynton. He had promised to treat me for lunch, and from his first remark as I sat down at our table, I knew he would be the soul of generosity. I hope you had a big breakfast today, Miss Brooks. <laughs> yes, and I plan on having an even bigger lunch, Mr. Boynton. Breakfast was four hours ago. Uh... I uh, know, uh, but living a highly sedentary life as we do, much of our caloric intake turns to nothing but flabby blubber. If we have more than a thimble full of cottage cheese, we're absolute pigs. <laughs> and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, if there's one thing that makes a woman attractive, it's a nice, slim figure. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, if there's one thing that makes a man attentive, it's a nice, fat wallet. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, if you don't want to treat me to lunch today, why keep beating around the bush? Just come out and say it. I don't want to treat you to lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> well, th that is, I, I want to, Miss Brooks, but I can't. Uh, you remember a week ago I was saving to put $10 down on a new suit? Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Then you bought a suit. <laughs> uh, not exactly a suit. Oh, uh, a sport jacket? Uh, not precisely. What did you buy? A Jeffy vacuum cleaner. <laughs> well, I know you look perfectly stunning in a Jiffy vacuum cleaner. Oh, I know what you're going to say, Miss Brooks. I live in a rented apartment. The landlady cleans my place once a week, and I have no earthly use for a vacuum cleaner. Then why did you buy it? Ooh, la, la. <laughs> it's French, for even a biologist sometimes deserts his frogs. <laughs> so, Lola? Harry paid you a visit, too. I still can't figure out what happened. Whew. All I know is I've committed myself for a vacuum cleaner which I don't need and can't afford. Uh, not that I hold you personally responsible because you sent her to me, Miss Brooks, but... But you're convinced you saw my face last week on Racket Squad. <laughs> well, actually, Mr. Boynton, if you'd shown a little more sales resistance... Hiya, Mr. Boynton. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Walter. Oh, what an entrancing sight. The fairest flower of Madison's faculty, seated next to Madison's most generous, big-hearted, philanthropic... Forget it, Walter. All his money is tied up in ooh-la-la. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all I wanted to borrow was half a buck. I'm in a little financial jam, Mr. Boynton. You see, I invited Harriet to lunch, and now I find out she hasn't got the money to treat me. <laughs> Well, couldn't you just advance me 50 cents till next Wednesday? Uh, well, uh, uh, you, you see... I hope uh, you two had a big breakfast, Walter. Don't you usually get your weekend allowance about this time, though? Y usually, but right now there's a big economy wave at my house. It started last night when my father bawled out my mother for being extravagant. For being extravagant? Yeah, she bought a Jiffy vacuum cleaner. <laughs> That Mr. Murdoch is really sweeping the country. Yeah, but, Walter, if your mother actually needed a vacuum, why did your father bawl her out for extravagance? Because an hour before, Dad had bought a Jiffy vacuum cleaner from a beautiful doll. <laughs> oh, you should see that Miss Perry. Ooh, la, la. You can't look at her without... Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Harriet. Well, Walter, did you get the O-Day for the Unchlay? No, he didn't get the O-Day, Harriet Hay, but I can let you have an Uck Bay until A-Day payday. Okay? Oh, gosh, decoded! <laughs> that means we eat. Come on, Harriet, let's dive into the navy bean soup. Hold it, sailor. Harriet, is your father still angry with me? Oh, awfully angry, Miss Brooks. 
All morning, he's had me on the phone arguing with the Jiffy people, but it seems they only cancel contracts with unreliable customers. They seem to feel school teachers always pay their debts. And we've got the pawn tickets to prove it. <laughs> Say, wait a minute, Harriet. You've given me a thought. I think maybe I can persuade them to take back all those cleaners. Swell, but where can you rent a Tommy gun in this town? <laughs> no, I'm serious, Walter. Bring both of your cleaners to my place before 8 o'clock tonight. Mr. Boynton, you do the same, and you too, Harriet. Now, here's what we're going to do. When Mr. Murdoch arrives at my house... Oh, I I'm... think I understand. You're going to convince him how low your sales resistance is. <laughs> Say, that's pretty good. Especially a woman with your resistance. Yes, Casanova? How would you know? <laughs> Armis Brooks will return in a moment. A few months ago, a great entertainer came back to radio, the medium most responsible for his rise to fame over two decades ago. In this short time, Rudy Valley has quickly reestablished himself as one of the nation's favorites. He holds forth in his New York hotel suite for one solid Sunday night hour of pleasure on the Rudy Valley Music Hall, a program that has become a mecca for top figures of the entertainment world. The roster of personalities Rudy Valley personally introduced to radio in the past reads like a who's who of show business. It includes such names as Burns and Allen, Red Skelton, Fanny Bryce, Joe Penner, Kate Smith, Eddie Cantor, and Bob Hope. In the new Rudy Valley Music Hall series, Rudy has already gone to work to compile a brand new list of great stars. Make the Rudy Valley Music Hall a Sunday night habit for fun, for surprises, for musical and vocal entertainment from those familiar words, hi, ho, everybody, right down the line to the end of the hour. Later tonight, at the star's address, it's the Rudy Valley Music Hall. Well, I thought I had a pretty foolproof way to persuade Mr. Murdoch to take back his vacuum cleaners. And since I needed her help, later that evening, I explained my idea to my landlady. Now, are you sure you understand my plan, Mrs. Davis? I think so, dear. We've got to convince that gorgeous Mr. Murdoch that we've loaded ourselves with debts because we have no sales resistance. That's the idea. We've got to convince him we're such an unreliable family that he'll take back all the cleaners around here. While we're at it, maybe we could convince him to take me back with him. <laughs> David. Well, girl can dream, can't she? But, Connie, I only hope your plan... Oh, Connie, Connie, that's him, it's him. Oh, my goodness, where did I put my sedatives? Oh, now, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> no time to get flustered. You've got to show a little self-control. Oh. That's it, self-control. Now, is my lipstick combed? My head on straight... Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, dear. I'll be right back. Hello, baby. Where do I sign? Where? Where? <laughs> oh, Mr. Murdoch, please come in. I was just helping Mrs. Davis finish our spring cleaning. Your spring cleaning? Yes, I always do my housework in this old off-the-shoulder cocktail dress. <laughs> but as you can see, I have my Jiffy vacuum right here with me. Yes, so I... That's it. Well, wait a minute, honey. If your jiffy is here, what's that? That sounds like a vacuum, too. Oh, I know. That's what's wonderful about your jiffies. You can tell their sound from a carpet sweeper in a second. Uh, what I meant was I had no idea you had two jiffy vacuums. Connie, I... Oh, hello, dear Mr. Murdoch. Oh, did you just buy another jiffy from him, Connie? No, Mrs. Davis. This is the same old thing we bought this morning. <laughs> well, dear, the bag in my jiffy is full. Do you want to empty it out for me? Why bother, Mrs. Davis? Just put that one aside and use the jiffy that's in the bedroom. You've got another jiffy vacuum in the, in the bedroom? Oh, yes, indeed. But, Connie, I just dread walking up all those stairs to get it. Oh, you're right, Mrs. Davis. Then why not use the one in the dining room? Well, uh, now, wait, girls, wait. You mean you've bought four Jiffy cleaners? Not counting the one we purchased just to loan out to the neighbors. Five vacuum cleaners? Mr. Murdoch, when we spring clean, we spring clean. <laughs> Someone said there's a recession going on. 
No, 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 look, ladies, uh, maybe we oversold you slightly. After all, making payments on five cleaners. Six. We also bought a clean-all vacuum. A clean-all? Please don't be angry with us, Mr. Murdoch. We only use the clean-all to clean the jiffies. <laughs> Six cleaners? Oh, I know just what you're thinking, Mr. Murdoch, that we're an unreliable family. But please don't think that. We've met many a second payment. Goodness, yes. Sometimes months roll by before we get those darling little reminder notes from the collection agency. Uh, yeah, well, uh, look, the girls, um, maybe I ought to take back a couple of the cleaners. Oh, but we always make our payments, Mr. Murdoch. True, we don't have much sales resistance on smaller things, but we weigh very carefully before we buy the really expensive items. How true. Only this morning we ran an ad in the paper to buy a used car. A man came over... And we looked at the car a full three minutes from this very window before we bought it. Yeah, well, um, maybe I ought to take back three cleaners. Oh, no, please don't, Mr. Murdoch. I've made a resolution not to buy one solitary thing the rest of this month. Oh, excuse me, please. Yes, sir? Hello, baby. My name is Phil Boynton, and I'm selling... I'm buying. What are you selling? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, beautiful. I saw your ad in the paper, and I happen to have a 1929 Chevrolet that's just begging to match up with those great, big, baby blue eyes. And to think he's been wasting all this on frogs and white rabbits. <laughs> Uh, I would have been glad to consider your offer, but only this morning you, uh, I... You what, uh, sugar? Only this morning Yes, I... honey? Only this... Yes, baby. Where do I sign? Where? Where? <laughs> do you have something you want me to sign, like a bill of sale, a promissory note, a marriage contract, auto contract? <laughs> oh, here. Uh, uh, no, no, wait a minute, Miss Brooks. You said you just bought a car this morning. Quiet, small fry. <laughs> now I'll just sign your little paper, Mr. Boynton. There you are. Now I own... Well, who is this coming up the walk behind you? Hello, baby. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, uh, who are you, sir? Ozzy Conklin is the name gorgeous. I saw your ad in the paper for a used car. Are you still in the market, luscious? Uh, since I was 18. Oh, you, <laughs> you mean for a car. Well, you see, I... Honey, I, just... I have a car outside that's a perfect match for those great, big, glorious, baby blue eyes. Where do I sign? Where? Where's the paper? Where is it, sir? This is fantastic. Miss Brooks, you, you told me you people weighed carefully all major purchases. Oh, that's true, Mr. Murdoch. Mr. Conklin, do you mind if I ask you a few things first about your car? Certainly, sugar. Ask me anything. All right. Does it have an engine? Yes. I'll buy it. <laughs> now, how much is it? How much? How much is it? Would 50 be too much, baby? Oh, no. Then make it 75. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Now, I sign here, right? Now, there you are. That does it. Miss Brooks, you people here are, are the most unreliable customers my company has ever dealt with, and uh, we can't afford to take the risk of having you as an account. I'm taking back all of our cleaners in the morning and tearing up each and every contract. But, Mr. Murdoch, we're really a reliable family. Oh, yes, I know. In two minutes, a man could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. Really? What is he asking for it? <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, transcribed, was produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Arthur Oldsburg and Lou Zerman with the music of Lud Gluskin. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Bob Rockwell, Gloria McMillan, Sandra Gould, and Joel Samuels. Be sure to be with us next week for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Our Miss Brooks.